Hey everybody, Do really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Palace. Hello on Kageyuki Shirashi route. We have just joined the <laughs> anti Shirashi coalition here with the other two girls, drinking away our woes at having to deal with him and his insufferability. Let's finish up this conversation. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. The drinks continued to come, and the three of us got really into our conversation. A particularly brave young lady actually came and gave the director some Valentine's chocolates. Of course, he said he wasn't hungry, and promptly threw them away on the spot. Can you believe that? Right in front of her, that's horrible! If he was just going to throw them away, he could have simply not accepted them in the first place. Every year, there's some poor naive new girl who gets crushed like that. He's handsome for a jerk. Yeah, I have to agree on that. True. But what's truly important is what's on the inside. After meeting him, I truly believe that. Hearing the things he says makes me want to lecture him on goodness and conscience. Pfft. Hmm? The booth next to ours had been quiet, but then I heard one of them fail to stifle laughter. Don't tell me she or she followed us. And I'm not, oh, shh. not so loud. Things are just getting interesting. Oh, sorry, Shirashi. I couldn't help it. Too late, guys. Hearing that made me stiffen as a cold finger of dread slid down my spine. Shirashi? I desperately hoped I'd misheard, but the voice had sounded all too familiar. B but we can see the door from here. We would have seen him walk in. Unless... Oh, jeez. Unless I've been here since before we arrived. How did we sit next to them and not see them? We've been talking about Shiraishi the whole time. None of it had been flattering. <laughs> What's wrong, ladies? Never you mind us. Please continue. I felt the blood drain from my face as Shiraishi peeked over the booth divider. How oh, could this be any worse? Though Sakura Gawa looked distinctly uncomfortable, Mukai hadn't budged an inch. Yeah, this is probably nothing she wouldn't have said directly to his face anyway. Oh, Director, you're here. I hadn't noticed you. Yup, we were having a little meeting of our own when we heard some familiar voices. And that was a fun conversation you three were having. Really? Shamelessly eavesdropping on a lady's conversation? You haven't a shred of dignity. Wait, you're a lady? Since when? As far as I know, ladies don't try to burn their superiors. Given my superior, it can't be helped. If you don't want to be bad-mouthed, don't be you. <laughs> ah, if I weren't going for a Shiraishi myself, I'd say these two should be a couple. <laughs> the back and forth between Shiraishi and Mukai was so frigid that just listening to them made me shiver. Shiraishi has a smile on his face, but I wonder what he's really feeling right now. It's scary not knowing how to read a person. That's enough, Shirashi. Oh, I'm surprised Yanagi let this go on lo that long. Probably tired of their antics, Yanagi got up and came over, and Emoto trailing behind. Yeah, bro. I mean, can you really blame him for saying some of that stuff? Oh, those are some big words from you, Enemoto. Uh, uh, I wasn't saying I agreed with him. No, no, uh not me. <laughs> Enemoto! Don't dump all the blame on me! Man, women can be so scary. I mean, a bashing club, seriously? Even the name is mean. You have a problem with the name I chose. Well, I see the director's associates are just as shameful and vexing as he is himself. Well, um, but you know, now that I think about it, it's got a catchy ring to it. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, you're such a yes man, Mineo. It's a good thing I did your route first. Oh, you want to bash me too now, is that it? Sure, go ahead. Bash me all you like. What? C come on, Shirashi. That was just a joke. Yeah, a joke. Th that's all. And an exceptionally unfunny one at that. As an apology, you should perform a trick for us. Huh? Oh, a trick. I like that idea. Oh, great. These two are teaming off the bully him. And a motto. Explode for us, would you? How are they supposed to do that? Explode? You want me to die? Shut up already. You're making my booze taste bad. Yeah, there's only one other person left, so... <laughs> huh? 
annoyed and not trying to hide it. Sasazaka walked up and kicked Enemoto in the shin. Yo! No violence! No violence! Bullying is bad! Quit your shrieking, idiot. I'm not here for the show. I got work to do. Tell that to Shiraishi. It's not my fault. He's just taking it out on me, seaweed head. And there you go. And that's the spirit. Keep it up. An argument preschoolers would be too mature for broke out between the two, Mukai egging them on. Sheesh, and they call themselves adults. Shaking her head in exasperation, Sakura Gawa nonchalantly moved away from Shiraishi. <laughs> Seems like the right time to escape. Are we ditching the bill on Mukai? I followed, getting out of my seat, and moving next to Yanagi. He seemed safer. Oh, so we're just playing musical chairs now. Um, I'm sorry about this, sir. Feeling awkward about this whole debacle, I bowed an apology. Yanagi shook his head, apologizing right back at me. Um, so you all came here for drinks too? Shiraishi came to the office earlier and told us to come with him to a bar because there was a really interesting conversation we could hear. Oh, <laughs> so he knew where we were going and he preempted us. I told him he could go by himself, but he got stubborn about it, saying if he went alone he'd get stuck sitting at the bar instead of the booth. The Shirashi Bashing Coalition can almost always be found at this bar, you know. <laughs> so he's known about it this whole time. I slowly looked to my side, just in time to see Shiraishi, glass in hand, plunk down next to me. Am I now sandwiched between these two? Why does he have to sit next to me? Because he likes you! And Mukai was in a really foul mood today. Given that, it was a 100% certainty that she would hold a meeting here tonight. So I came here early and settled in to wait. And just as I expected, you all showed up. I got to hear a really interesting conversation out of the deal too. Now I have a very clear idea just what you think of me. <sighs> I was too scared to look at Shiraishi. But with him sitting next to me, I had no easy way to escape. This is so awkward. Desperate for help, I looked over at Yanagi and begged him with a look to say something, anything. He's got nothing. Oh right, Yanagi isn't a talkative person. <laughs> look at you fidget. You don't have to be scared. Nothing will happen. Easier said than done. My throat felt dry as a desert. I grabbed the glass in front of me and chugged it. Hmm. What? Bugged by him staring at me, I didn't taste it. What exactly did I just drink? Downing the last drop, I slammed the glass on the counter. Hey. Y yes well, that was my drink, you know. You chugged it like a pro. Oh, I'm not sure I want to know what kind of drink Shiraishi drinks. Huh? I looked back at the counter. He was right. Next to an empty glass was my half-drunk soda. They're both similar in color. Well, I guess you just got flustered. Mine was pretty strong, though. Uh-oh. Huh? Um, uh, I'm sorry. Still confused about what just happened, I tried to smooth over things somehow, but... Suddenly, my face flushed with heat, and my eyelids felt like they'd been weighted with stones. Oh boy. Huh? Somebody's gonna have to take me home. Then the world began to spin. Hoshino, are you okay? Y yes sure Oh, and I just totally blacked out. And let me guess, they're actually going to trust Shiraishi to take me home. Tingly, floaty warmth spread through my body. What was I doing again? Is... is something petting my hair? I wonder who it was. It felt... nice. Huh. You're almost like a real cat like this. Oh, right. Cats. Wait, cats? My eyes flew open. Ah, oh, you're up. Huh? What's going on? I was lying down, and my head was in Shiraishi's lap. It seemed like he was petting my hair. <laughs> that expression on Ichika's face. 
And then actually, it, all right, this just looks wrong because it looks like he's holding her head in his lap. <laughs> Having trouble absorbing the situation. Basically, you chugged my drink and passed out. How long was I passed out? It didn't seem like any sudden onset illness. I guess you were just tired. You slept like a log. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay, don't worry about it. It was a great chance to observe you sleep. Uh, so you're observing me even now? Did it feel good to have someone pet your hair? You had a teeny tiny smile on your face. Aww. Y you imagine that? I, um, I'm very sorry I caused you trouble. I'm fine now, thank you. Oh, uh, you shouldn't get up just yet. Hold still. But... And don't worry. I'll make sure to take you back to your place, safe and sound. Huh? On the surface, that seemed like a kind offer. But leaving myself in Shiraishi's care... If I need help, I'll ask Sakura Gawa or Mukai to walk me home. I bet they're gone. Everybody probably abandoned us, didn't they? Mukai is long gone, and the other woman took her home. She has a bad habit of glopping on to anyone she sees when she's drunk, you know? Mukai does, really? It didn't seem like she was drunk. But I guess she just hides it well. With neither of my two lifelines present, it got that much harder to turn his offer down. What about the rest of the guys? But I said all those insulting things about him, not knowing he was there. I can't face him. I, um... Here, let me tell you something funny. That other woman tried to take you with her. She tried to open out the bottom button on your shirt to let you breathe. So I said I'd take you instead. If I hadn't stepped up and stopped her, she might have seen your collar. Ah. Uh, so you were saving me. I gulped. Should I? She stared down at me, smiling widely. Mukai really didn't like that idea, and said so. So I asked her if she really wanted to see the mark I'd left on your neck that badly. After that, both of them left quietly. <laughs> and now back to the freaked out face. The what? You left where? I couldn't come up with anything else off the top of my head. I think that was a pretty clever one. He's lying. He has to be. Someone as quick-witted and glib as he is could come up with a dozen bland excuses easily. <laughs> but he went with the most fun one. <laughs> <laughs> now you're sulking. You really do hate me, don't you? Shiraishi, taxi's here. Yeah, the other guys are here. They can help. Oh. Your ride has arrived, and that's too bad. Can you stand? I'm fine. I felt wobbly, but I stood up. I know he could have come up with a better way to deflect attention from my collar, but that doesn't change the fact that he helped. Acknowledging that was a bitter pill, but I swallowed it. Turning to him, I bowed. Thank you for your help. Hmm? Huh? He surprised at being thanked? Should I she? Sorry, I didn't expect you to thank me. You caught me off guard. <laughs> no, so that's how it goes. Interesting. What, you didn't know that when you were nice to people they show gratitude? Huh? Nothing. Anyway, shall we go? You're coming with? What, just to make sure? I was half afraid that he would needle me again as we got into the taxi, but he didn't. Instead, it looked like he was mulling something over. The whole trip back to my place passed in silence. That's strange. I guess he's in the process of falling for me now, so he's being introspective. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. I watched the taxi carrying him drive off, letting a long sigh of relief escape as it vanished from sight. Do I really have to see him tomorrow? Feeling miserable, I opened my front door and shuffled inside. Kazuki, you home? Jeez, suddenly I feel exhausted. It seemed like, ever since I met Shiraishi, these waves of exhaustion had become all too common. He acted completely normal at the bar. He can't have forgotten how he argued earlier today already, can he? Wait, it's Shiraishi. Yes, he totally can. Common sense was an alien concept to him. There was no telling what he thought. 
He probably totally dismisses all negativity because that's all he gets. He always has this, I know something you don't smile on his face. It's hard to read him. <sighs> huh? Halfway through my sigh, my phone buzzed. I peeked at the screen, afraid of what I'd see. Phew, it's just Psyche. I felt a bit disappointed there for a second. I was honestly scared it was from Shiraishi. Well, why would this disappoint me then? Hello? Ah, uh, Hoshino. Hey, I'm out drinking right now, but it's kind of awkward being alone. Wanna join me? Aw, oh, I wish you had called earlier. Oh, sorry. I actually just got back from drinking at our usual bar. What? Hey, that's not fair. Why didn't you invite me? It was a ladies' night out this time, though we had unexpected visitors drop in on us. Uh-huh. Oh, well. I guess it's nice for you to have a chance to hang out and gossip with other ladies. Yeah. I feel a lot better for it, I think. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. We've had so many incidents lately, you know. SRCPO has to be getting flooded with phone calls. It can't be any easier for you. I bet you're getting dispatched all over. Kinda, yeah. Still, I'm glad to hear you're okay. It's rough, but let's keep working hard. Yeah, thanks. Let's go out for a drink again sometime. Sure thing. See ya. I hung up, but after a second, put my phone down on the table. Incident after incident, huh? I let my fingers drift across my collar. It was cold to the touch. Hard. I have to do everything I can to solve the extant incidents. I didn't have time to let Shiraishi mess with me. I figured that the focal point of the December X Day case would be me and my collar. The letter sent to me had spoken of X Day. The coin found at the scene matched Adonis's. But it wasn't me. Yesterday, and now today, incident after incident. What the heck is Adonis even thinking? I have no clue. Guess we'll find out. Why is Yanagi in the background? Oh, here we go. I realize you're enjoying a moment of melancholy, but mind if I interrupt? Is this the roof of the detective agency? Would you go away if I said I did? Huh, so you do understand. Oh, I'm not used to this whole taking drunk girls home thing. It got me worn out. You volunteered. Don't complain. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, trying to be protective and conscientious is a real pain in the butt. You were trying to be protective and conscientious, really? Oh, that's so cute. I guess that's why he was being quiet. Whatever. So, from your point of view, how does Hoshino check out? Is Yanagi actually the person he was on the phone with earlier, then? Pure as the driven snow. No priors. No disciplinary problems. Aside from the collar, there's no connection between her and Adonis. I'll admit, I was shocked when she told me that she would work this case with you, of all people. But I know you. You went to her with some kind of deal, so you could observe her better. Huh. Ding ding. That's the correct answer. From what I've seen, she couldn't kill a fly. Hell, she's so sloppy, she drinks the wrong drink and passes out cold right in front of me. If that was all an act, I'd be impressed. But it wasn't. She's just that stupid and naive. You look like you're having fun. Do I? Yeah, I get that she's a rare specimen to you, but I never expected you to be this intrigued by her. I'm surprised. If I let her be, she might get herself killed. Though I almost want to experiment and see if the guy who collared her actually wants to kill her. Shiraishi. Almost want, just almost. The price of failure is too high to consider it. I do want to get along with her, honest. I'm going out of my way to look after her, you know. After what I heard about the stunt you pulled during that questioning, I very much doubt that. All that, I just took a page from her book and expressed my honest opinion point blank. You think I should have buttered her up instead? You can figure that out for yourself. Oh, but I don't wanna. You think for me. <laughs> That sounds like such a childish thing to say. I may have to deal with you, but I don't have to like it. And I don't have to go that far for you. You know, Yanagi, 
You're a cold person too. But unlike me, you're actually popular. Even the little cat seems to like you. I wonder where the difference is. It's him being nice to people. He may be cold, but he's still really nice, and he shows his concern. What? Didn't the girl's conversation you were eavesdropping on make any impression on you? Hmm. No, why would it? Their opinion of me won't affect my life in any meaningful way at all. <laughs> but changing the way I interact with her may change her reactions to me. It piques my curiosity enough that I just might experiment with that. Hmm. Perhaps I'll start by giving her gifts and observing how she responds. If you feel like it. Just don't give her anything weird, got it? By weird, you mean things like desiccated bugs? I wouldn't. Well, okay, that could be funny. <laughs> oh, good lord. Shiraishi. Okay, okay, I'll pick more appropriate things. As long as I do the considerate thing, you're happy with it, right? Besides, I can't afford to fool around forever. It seems like there's still something about Shiraishi's motivations here that Yanagi knows about, but we don't. The first thing I noticed as I got in the next morning was the black box on my desk. Ah, our first present from Shiraishi. What the heck is this? It was about a foot long by eight inches wide. It had no address tag to it, so whoever it was had bought it recently. What's up, Hoshino? Um, Mochida. There's a box on my desk. Oh, that. Shiraishi came in a little while ago and put it there for you. Huh? Said it was a care package. Why don't you open it? Uh, I'm afraid to. Praying something wasn't going to jump out at me, I carefully eased the lid off. Inside were rows of madelines, financiers, brownies, and an assortment of other fine pastries and cookies. Oh my god, now I'm hungry. Whoa, now that had to be pricey. That Shiraishi seems like a pretty great guy. Y yeah <laughs> Like, I don't know what to think of this. Just in case, I quickly... I quickly glanced... I quickly glanced around to make sure he wasn't hiding anywhere nearby. For some reason, I thought he gave this to me out of the goodness of his heart. I took a Madeline out of the box. Nothing happened. Maybe I'm overthinking things. Setting the box and the questions it held to the side for now, I turned to Mochida. There hasn't been another incident related to Adonis today, right? We haven't heard any official words so far, no. But I wouldn't breathe easy just yet. Right. Consecutive incidents happened yesterday and the day before, both likely tied to Adonis. There was no guarantee that there wouldn't be a third. A thick and oppressive tension hung in the air. With not one, but two big cases back to back, a certain profiler has to be real popular right now. <sighs> oh, uh, sorry. I guess that's really not the best subject to bring up right now. I had reported to Mochida about yesterday's questioning, and what happened afterwards. I should have stopped Shiraishi, even if I had to be forceful about it. I intend to visit Miss Takeuchi later today, and formally apologize to her. In that case, as your direct supervisor, I should tag along to offer my apologies as well. W what? N no, you don't have to do that. I couldn't ask you to go out of your way. Nah, it's no big deal. It's what my superiors did for me back in the day. Besides, being in the SRCPO means that apologizing to people is basically our thing. <laughs> That's your job, to just apologize to people all day. Um, sir? That's not exactly something to brag about. I didn't know if it was accidental or on purpose, but Mochida's words gave me a renewed desire to go and visit with Miss Takeuchi. Yeah, I don't know why I was having so much trouble pronouncing that yesterday. I guess I was like, I don't know, sleep deprived drunk or something. <laughs> I wish I could go back and redo those lines, but it's too much trouble. This the place? Let's get to it then. This is weird. Having Mochida here with me. Mochida reached out and pressed the doorbell. A few minutes later... 
Yes. I'm Masanobu Muchida, from the Shinjuku police. I hear my subordinates caused you a great amount of trouble yesterday, miss. I'd like to apologize for their behavior. That's unnecessary. If it means they acquire the information they need, what care do the police have for their feelings of the people? I don't want to talk to you. Please leave. Huh? Um, that's why we wanted to come and talk to you today, so we could apologize. I guess she doesn't want it. No matter what Mochida tried to say, it was obvious Miss Takeuchi wasn't going to listen. Oh, I feel so bad that I was mispronouncing it before. Why Why was I having trouble before? Why was I saying it wrong? There's no point to getting her any more agitated than she already is. We better go. Yeah. I followed after him, my shoulders drooping. It was my job to listen to people complain. I'd had to sit through more than one heated rant, but once someone shut you down, that was it. If Shiraishi had given just a little bit more thought to what he said, we might have been able to get some more information out of her. Things at least wouldn't have wound up this bad, that's for sure. I felt myself getting frustrated with Shiraishi all over again when I noticed someone walking up. Oh my, oh, I thought I recognized you. If it isn't Officer Hoshino and Officer Mochida, hello, hello. Ah, hello, ma'am. Come to think of it, you do live in this neighborhood, don't you, ma'am? Yes, I'm right down the way, but never mind that. I heard that there was a new incident. Are you two out asking around about it? Not today, ma'am. We're out on other business. Oh, I saw the police visit Satomi in September, so I thought that something might be up again. Satomi? Could she mean... Do you mean Miss Takeuchi? She does live nearby. Would you happen to know her? Oh, you bet I do. I've known her for years. She's always been a sweet child. Oh, but she was such a bundle of nerves during the whole September rigmarole. I heard old troubles had come back to haunt her. Old troubles? Mochida and I exchanged a glance. Really? Would you mind telling us a little more about that, ma'am? I've heard something second and third hand, but that's all. Will that do? Of course, thank you. Anything can help. We moved over to the edge of the sidewalk, so as not to be in the way. The old lady began to talk. You know that murder from September? Well, it sounds like some of Satomi's old students might have been involved in it somehow. They were two of her kids from that free school she taught at years ago. Yes, both the murderer and the victim were in her homeroom class, correct? Yes, exactly. Goodness, has it already been ten years? Poor Satomi was such a wreck after she finally quit that place. When the police came and talked to her about the September murder, I think they asked about it. She's been acting strange ever since. The sight of Miss Takeuchi's panicked face as Shiraishi grilled her flitted across my mind. So something did happen while she was still a teacher at the free school. I know it wasn't much, but was it helpful? Do you want to chat with Satomi herself? N no no that was very interesting, ma'am. I'm sure it will be helpful to us in solving the case. Thank you so much. It was very helpful, actually. We said our goodbyes to the elderly woman and continued walking. I glanced over at Mochida. It looks like Shiraishi and I touched on a delicate subject with Miss Takeuchi yesterday. Then it's no wonder she reacted the way she did. Whatever happened doesn't seem like something that just faded quietly into the past for her. I know it's going to be difficult after what happened yesterday. But even if it's something that isn't connected to our cases, I'd like to help Miss Takeuchi deal with whatever it is that's bothering her. People don't open up about deep personal problems to strangers that easily, you know? The old lady was like that at first, too. It was only after you kept insisting that you wanted to listen that she started opening up. And now I regret it because she calls us all the time. At the end of the day, trust is king. Don't rush things. It's okay to take it slow. Yes, sir. There's no guarantee the information I got would be worth the time spent to get it. That's what Shiraishi said anyway. But I had my own way of doing things. 
Mochida's words helped renew my faith in that. Returning to the station, I sat down to clean up some paperwork and answer some phone calls. The next time I looked up, it was dusk. I didn't have much time to look into anything about that free school situation today. I'd love a chance to question other people who are connected to it. I decided to flip through the reports for other people I might be able to track down. I scanned halfway down the page when I heard the sound of footsteps drawing close. Is that Shiraishi come to see what I thought of his gift that I haven't tried out yet? If it were me, I'd be remembering uh that prank Shiraishi pulled on Sakuragawa and, you know, just nibble at it to see if they're actually legitimate treats and not something made of something really weird. Miss Hoshino, do you have a moment? Yeah, there's something we want to ask you. Oh no, I know what this is about. They're going to ask if I'm actually dating Shiraishi. Um, this won't take long. Please come with us. You're going to ban me from the coalition because Shiraishi said I had a love bite, aren't you? I'm not quite sure what was going on. I got up and followed after them. Don't kick me out of the coalition. I need some girl bonding. They took me to an interrogation room. Now then, we shall begin the questioning. Miss Hoshino, please have a seat. Questioning? Just sit down, okay? Even more confused, I lowered myself into a seat. Mukai sat across from me, looking businesslike. Oh boy. Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> the Shiraishi Bashing Coalition will now begin a special interrogation of our new member, Hoshino. Oh boy. All you gotta do is answer truthfully, and everything will be just fine, got it? E yes With no idea what she was about to ask, I braced for the worst. I despise beating around the bush, so let me cut straight to the heart of the matter. Miss Hoshino, are you or are you not dating the director? What? <laughs> Wait, what? No, seriously, what? Where did that question come from? <laughs> Don't you remember what he told you? Don't bother trying to play innocent. Should I she himself spilled the beans last night? Yes, he stated that on your neck, he left a... a h hickey. No, that never happened. You're mistaken. Hoshino, oh, I told you to answer truthfully. You need not play coy with us. Bear your heart and confess everything. I'm telling you, that didn't happen. Shiraishi just made the whole thing up to mess with you. And turn us again. See, it's his plan. He's trying to turn us against each other. Uh-huh. So, let's see your neck. Oh, no. This is all totally backfired. I, um, I can't show you that. So, you do have a relationship with the director. What? No. I can't show you, but the reason isn't because of anything that's going on between us. There isn't, hmm? Well, you may think that, but perhaps Shiraishi's got different ideas. What? Well, even if he does have different ideas, if I don't know about it, doesn't mean we're together. Huh? What does that mean? We got further evidence earlier. He told us he gifted you with pastries. He asked me if he'd made an appropriate choice. Oh, no. And he probably asked her that innocently, too. He wasn't trying to cause trouble. Or was he? Maybe it was a double-edged sword. Maybe he was going for both things. Ah, well, in any case, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to end in the middle of this scene. And I'm, oh my god, I want to finish this scene so bad, but I know it's going to be long. I'm sorry, I should have stopped before we got in here to shut my... Eh. But I hope to see you in the next video <laughs> to finish with this interrogation. Let's see if we get kicked out of the club or not. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye-bye, everybody.